everyone. In today's video, I'm going to be doing the first little installment in a Beauty and the Beast series that I'll be running over the course of the next week. And actually, the last video will end on next Tuesday. So this one is going to be Beast. And I started out with Beast because I think he is just the most impressive. He's got all the different layers. He's very dimensional. I absolutely love it. I hope you guys love it as much as I do. And if you are obsessed with this whole set of them, I do have them made into a necklace that is for purchase on my little online store. And I will put a link to that in the description box below. So come back for that and I will see you guys next time. Bye. Bye. So we're going to begin with an overlay of a shimmery gold acrylic. And this is the only video that's going to show this process because it is the same for all of the other designs in this set. And this is a mix of yellows that I put together that I thought looked really nice for Belle. It just gave me that like sheer tool layer of uh, her dress is what it reminded me of. After I have that done, I just filed it into shape and now I'm going to be sculpting Beast with various shades of brown acrylic. And if you're wondering why I didn't do a clear encapsulation over the top of my background, it is because I knew that this was going to be made into a necklace and I wanted to keep the backgrounds quite thin so that the whole necklace stayed nice and delicate looking. So that's why normally I would have encapsulated but because I knew what the end goal was for this set I figured it wasn't necessary in this one circumstance. So now going back to my beast I'm starting out with a medium shade of brown and I'm just going to kind of get the base shape of his head done and when I'm doing this you can see I'm not too worried about how smooth it is on top. There's a couple little lines where you can see where one bead of acrylic starts and one ends and that kind of a deal and that's not a problem at all. All of that will get smoothed out with the future layers of acrylic and we're just going to add a lot to it so it's fine. So then now the next thing is going to be a darker shade of brown and we're going to be adding kind of, I don't know, it's like his mohawk that comes down, the darker shade that comes down over his forehead and then there's some on like the sides of his face what's kind of going up over towards his shoulder on the back. The whole area is going to get a little bit of that layer of dark darker brown acrylic and when you're doing these layers you can kind of give them some height a little bit if you'd like to and build up some different dimension that way as well especially like this one this is going to be the bridge of his nose or kind of like the yeah I guess you could say the bridge of his nose or it's like his eyebrow wrinkle it's not really the bridge of his nose it's where his nose area attaches to his forehead if that makes any sense. And then this one here, this is the next section that would be like his brow bone, if you if you will. So all of these layers you can add some extra height to if you are trying to decide on, you know, what kind of acrylic to be using, you know, just in general for doing 3D art. I'm using Koopa's, their 3D monomer, and I've mentioned it in past videos. It is just a remarkable product. It works so well. It really makes it so building up height, like I just did for that whole brow bone, nose attaching to forehead zone. <laughs> Giving it that extra height is so easy with that particular monomer. So if you are in the market for a new monomer and you are a fan of 3D art, you can definitely, I would highly recommend checking that one out. Otherwise, um, I do use Koopa's other monomer, just their traditional sculpting monomer for everything else. I, I like their monomers. I've tried out several and those seem to just stand out in the crowd. But now I'm going to be doing another layer of acrylic. This is going to be a tan color that's going to be for his actual like eyebrows. Um, so he's got all of these different layers to him and so many different colors, so many different shades of brown. So just kind of bear with me with saying what they are because it's a lot of spots that could probably be considered more than one, more than one thing. So now this next little bit of that lighter tan color is going to be for the actual bridge of his nose. And we're going to be doing that one, same thing. And I will put links to, or the color names for a lot of the colors of acrylic I'm using. A good portion of them are double dips. That one in the background that I used is a mix of double dip acrylics. A few of them I used, uh, there's one, I think it's called Macaroni. No, I can't think of what it is, but it's a yellow that I've used before. And then some gold glitter and some clear is what I used to get that background color. Otherwise, a lot of these colors, the browns and the cream color, the tans, all of that is from Double Dip. So I will put those color names in the description box below as well as my discount code. So if you're interested, you can check those out as well. I don't have a discount code for Koopa, but if you'd like, I can certainly put a link to that monomer down below as well because I just I just love it so much that I want to shout it from the rooftops like a crazy lady but now with a gray I'm going to be taking and adding just the start of his shirt and even though his shirt is really white it isn't gray exactly just because this scene of the movie where he's wearing his fancy clothes he's it's a darker scene I mean I guess everything with the beast is in kind of like darker shadows and everything so even though it is probably a white shirt, it just appears gray. So we're going to go with gray just to kind of keep with that tone. And then with some metallic gold, I'm going to be adding the vest, I guess you could say, of his outfit. And then with a nice rich blue color, we're going to be adding his coat. So this blue is an absolutely gorgeous color. When you're picking out a blue for this, 
you want him to look really like really fancy I guess you could say so pick out a blue color that's just a really rich very vibrant shade and it just gives that kind of royal vibe to it so definitely grab a blue that's really really nice and in intense in color so we got the two little bits of the coat on the side if you're working on a square nail or even a coffin nail you're going to have more room for doing details of his coat his sleeves maybe on the sides so if you're getting your reference photos just bear that in mind that your nail shape may give you a little bit more working space for some of those details than this almond and then he's got a bow on the front of his outfit that goes it's instead of being horizontal like most bows it is vertical i guess it wouldn't be a bow per se it's more like his tie i don't know you know that area and it's got a little knot in the middle and you kind of can manipulate your acrylic to make it look slightly slightly roughly too so give it a little bit of texture there and then the little uh button in the middle with blue or the little maybe it's a brooch in the middle with blue then add a little bit more gold to the sides of his coat again if you have a nail that has more working space you'll be able to do more of these details which would be really fun because his clothes are so immaculate and so detailed same thing with Belle's dress if you had more space and you could do more details on her dress too that would that would certainly be fun so then after you have that done then I'm going to go back through and do a little bit more details on his face now that what I had started before has had a chance to fully set and I'm not concerned about ruining what I've already begun I'm going to add his ears and I'm also going to be adding his horns and when I'm adding his horns, the color that I needed was a dark charcoal type color, which isn't one that I currently have in my collection. It is one that I have ordered though. So soon I should have a dark charcoal once I get to, you know, get it in the mail and play around with it because it's a color that's really lacking in my acrylic collection as any shade of gray, basically besides this one. So we're going to be doing his horns with the incorrect shade, but I will fix that in a moment and it will all be fine and it's actually kind of a nice little technique to have in your back pocket if you do have a color that is missing or you're doing a character and there's a very specific color that is required then if, as long as you can know how to fix it it's not really an issue so you can always go back through and adjust things as needed i'm going to also use that incorrect shade of gray to add his nose and then with some white acrylic i'm going to be adding his eyes and his teeth so with his eyes, this is something that is completely up to you, your choice, whether you want to sculpt them or you want to paint them in. I always used to be somebody to be like, you know, I only want to sculpt what I have to sculpt and paint everything else. And somewhere recently, I would say in the past six months to a year, closer to the six month range, I decided to start sculpting things more. And I discovered I actually think it's easier. And I was always afraid to do the little things like eyes like this. I always would have painted those eyes. And for some reason, I decided to give it a try. And I found it to be a lot more pleasant of an experience. So if you have never sculpted the little details like the eyes and you've always just painted them on, give it a try see what you think and you may find that like me it's actually a lot easier than painting and you'll like it who knows it's it really surprised me actually how easy I thought it was to sculpt the eyes with a sort of a pinkish shade I'm going to be adding his lips and I also added his goatee with the same kind of lighter tan color that I used for his nose and eyebrows and now we're going to be doing all of those lovely details with some acrylic paint and I am using so many shades of brown acrylic paint throughout this I was mixing them constantly you can see me doing it on my thumb I mix some brown and black to get darker shades to do some details on the darker areas and I mix some brown with some white to add some highlights here and there. There's just a lot of different shades that you can use throughout this design just to add depth. And every time you mix a new color and you add a new little bit here and there to just give it a little bit more, more depth, then you're doing yourself a, a favor and you're giving your design more, more detail and more life but it's all unnecessary. It's all something that looks really nice and definitely adds, but is it a super important step where it's absolutely required? No, it isn't. So it's something fun to do and it's something that can really take things to the next level if you'd like to, but it isn't a required element. Now I'm gonna go back through and I mixed a color of acrylic paint that was the right shade for those horns and nose. So I'm going to paint over my horns and nose with that color. I added a slightly darker color and I'm going to be adding some more depth to them as well as the nose and his eyes I did with as, as close to the same color as his coat as I could find for the iris. And so that's a nice bright blue again. And I'm just gonna do some black outlines everywhere. It seems like they're needed. I like to dilute my black paint with a little bit of water before using it for thin outlines. It just creates a little bit easier to work with for just a texture. Add some lighter tan color highlights on the lighter shades of his face. And as you can see, I keep mixing different colors of brown. I like to use my thumb as a palette. If you're working with acrylic paint, it is non-toxic and it isn't going to 
cause you any long-term problems. So you can use your skin as a palette, which I personally find to be incredibly convenient, but totally up to you. A actual palette is always a good choice as well. I'm going to finish off his eyes with a little bit of outlining and then his pupil and then a little white dot of highlight for his eyes. With a diluted white, I'm going to be adding some highlights to his shirt and tie and then apply a layer of gel sealer over the background so that gold glitter is super shiny. Cure that, apply some matte top coat over Mr. Beast, and that is it. I hope you guys love this design and are as excited as I am to be showing you the rest of them in this series. The next one is going to be Belle tomorrow, so definitely come back to see her as they are uploaded. I will put the links to them in the description box as well. And then here is that necklace all done. Um, as far as purchasing goes, you can pick the necklace length and if you want Chip and the Rose to be on the necklace or as a set of earrings, so that's kind of exciting. And there's only one of these, so it's a first come, first serve situation. And otherwise, I will see you guys next time. Bye!